there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, by request, we are gonna paint this bird. This was one of the um, the projects I did during World Watercolor Month, so I thought, hey, why not? Sketchbooks are a great place to get ideas from, too, for, um, you know, final paintings. But, um, hey, if it comes out as good as that one, I'll be thrilled, <laughs> because, um, you know, it's, it always seems like, you know, you do better, better works when you're not worrying about it. So I'm gonna start off with, I'm drawing with a color raised pencil. I'm gonna start off with an oval for the head area. And I'm gonna do this other oval kind of uh, tipped for the body. Get the gesture right. Let's see, how far does the head come out from the body there? I loved his sassy, uh, sassy little gesture, so I wanted to get that. Get that beak in there, carry on the mask area of his face. Very crooked beak. I don't want that so crooked. Get this flay, uh, floof of plumage there. Then we've got this. Uh, got a um, well, it's like a wire, but I'm gonna make it a branch. there that wing you see a little bit of the swing kind of coming out off the body a little bit and the body goes down like that then we've got some darker feathers you got more translucent feathers and then you got these uh, longer is coming off like that. Okay. All right, first thing we're gonna do is paint the background. I'm gonna use my M Gram palette here, which I haven't used on camera for a long time. And I'd ask people on Instagram, what should I use? Um, what should I, what should I use in upcoming videos? I was wanting to use my different watercolor palettes during World Watercolor Month. And it was fun to kind of like use those older palettes. It's kind of like painting with an old friend. And um, I think actually Rosie, the one that made this sketchbook for me, she suggested I use my M. Graham palette. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So, uh, oh, another funny thing about that particular picture, a few people asked me if they could purchase it, and I'm like, I'm sorry, it's in my sketchbook, so at least I'll have one out in case anybody, anybody wants to purchase it, it will be uh, not part of my sketchbook. And I'll be using M. Graham paint so I can be assured of the quality because I'd use the art whale paints on the, one of my sketchbook and I like those paints a lot they're just I don't know what happened they're like unavailable now like they sold out after I did my review and then they just says unavailable on um, on Amazon I think they have it on their website for more money which kind of annoys me it's like did you just pull your stock off Amazon because it got popular after the review so you could sell it for more money on your website hmm I don't like that. I don't like that kind of uh, that kind of uh, that kind of business. Hope this paper's okay. It was um, an older sheet of uh, Windsor and Newton Professional watercolor paper. It was 100% cotton, and I think they're. I don't know if the papers now are 100% cotton or not. But back, I don't know, uh, probably 20 years ago they were, and I had this like I was going through my old uh, filing cabinet of. I would tear down my large papers and put them in folders and I came across that one. So let's see. So I'm using a different palette than what I had what I painted it originally. But um, let's let's mix up some colors. Let's start with some either yellow ochre or raw sienna, whatever you have. I think this might be a raw sienna. It looks kind of like that. Throw some of that in. I don't think you need to have both yellow ochre and raw sienna on your palette. I think it's whatever one you like better, to be honest. Some companies use the exact same mix, so it's like I don't even know why they bother having, having both colors. Let's do some, um, 
Well, let's do like some English red. That's got a little bit of a, a nice body and texture to it. A little different than a than a burnt sienna. You could use burnt sienna though if you want to. Oh, I should. You know what? I didn't didn't pre-spray this palette. And I haven't used this palette in ages, so uh, I probably should have done that. This it's working fine though. Let's do some a mix of um, good old ultramarine blue, and we'll do the light red since that's what we're going to use. We don't need to grab burnt sienna if we've already used if we've already used that color. So I'm not. I didn't wet the bird or the branch. Oh, by the way, I've got a sale going on in my um, Teachable School. All my watercolor courses are 40% off with a coupon code FUN40. And I have a course on painting birds if you would like to know more about painting birds. Along with a variety of other classes for different skill levels in watercolor, drawing, and pastel. Uh, let's see, I want some green. And I think I used like a... Um, a Viridian hue, but maybe I'll use actual Viridian because I have that right here in my palette. Let's see how that, oh, that that uh, woke up pretty well. This brush here that I'm using, I tend to use that a lot for um, for just wetting background, so I'll have to make sure I clean it really well after this. Oh, I'm also going to be using a little bit of colored pencil on this, which is a good thing because I think it just made his head too small. <laughs> It's a Viridian hue. I wrote, it says PG-18. I was just looking at the, I have a uh, tape along the edge of my palette where I wrote the uh, colors and the pigment codes. But boy, that wakes up pretty well. I wonder if it has any additives, but I think they would have to disclose it if they did. Well, that's pretty. The Viridian and the yellow ochre is nice. Let's see, or a Rossian, or whatever. Let me see, what is that? That is yellow ochre. I like the the, uh, the loose edge, you know, rather than a taped edge. I like that kind of just rough, random edge, especially in sketchbooks. I guess it wouldn't matter if you're gonna frame it, but oops, I've lost some of my tail feathers there. Well, I just kind of lost the edge of it, but that's alright, I can bring it back when I paint the bird. Alright, I think I'm gonna let this dry. You could add some salt to it if you wanted to, but um, I think it'll have a little granulation on its own. And, well, maybe a little bit more brown before we go. I like that, that English red kind of color. And a little bit more of that. As long as the paper is still uniformly wet, you should be able to keep adding. that dry and then uh, when we come back we will start painting the bird. Welcome back. Um, it's a couple hours later actually. <laughs> oh boy. Um, what I'm going to do here is actually scrub back. I'm just dipping my uh, my brush in some water. I wanted to soften that edge. I'm not sure if it's going to or not but that's alright because I'm actually going to be, oh that is stubborn paint or paper, one or the other. Um, I'm going to be 
using some mixed media on this piece, so I'm not too concerned if I can't get it to scrub back. Uh, yeah, I'll soften it. I don't think I'm just going to scrub back, but that's all right. Um, this brush here, by the way, I really like it. It's the Mental Line from Royal and Langnickel. It is the watercolor scrubber. Uh, the line is R88SC. It's a number six, and this is the, probably the most useful size. It's wonderful. It is like a short-haired filbert, and it's great for scrubbing without damaging your paper. So I think this paper, because it is a bit older, it's quite a bit older, it's probably late 90s, early 2000s, Windsor & Newton, 100% um, cotton paper. I think that the sizing hasn't gone bad, but it definitely, it's not as heavily sized as like an Arches, and I think that might be kind of how it is, and it's probably why I haven't used it a ton. Um, now I'm going to thin down the light red here. Now light red, English red, those type of PR 108 pigments can be a little bit murky meaning not very transparent so if you, although if you get like a Windsor Newton burnt sienna they use PR 108 and it isn't more transparent than other brands but still it's not a really transparent color so just want to give you give you a heads up on that I, I'm just using it rather than burnt sienna because I already used it in this painting I'm gonna grab some yellow ochre And add that in there too. Gonna take some Viridian. Add that right underneath the, the uh, branch there. Bring that up on the tummy. I don't know why I started this on the bottom, probably because I just scrubbed the uh, the um, the tail, and I wanted to just get into there while it was still while it was still wet. That one, that's probably why. One more yellow ochre. We're gonna do yellow ochre around the edges here. The M Gram Viridian it does rewet a lot easier than other brands. I will tell you that. And it's, it's a little vi more vibrant, it seems like. I'm going to need a brighter blue. I think I am going to use a phthalo blue because I don't have a cobalt teal in this um, in this palette. Oh, that's such a pretty color, isn't it? Sometimes using a cobalt teal or cobalt turquoise is nice just because it's softer. Um, just, you know, you can use that if you want. But if you don't have it, then use the phthalo blue and just kind of uh, water it down because it's going to be real strong. That's pretty. I'm actually going to try to soften up there a little bit. Maybe I'll grab that scrubber back. This looks really harsh. I mean, it's not really going to matter because I can use... I'm gonna use colored pencil like I did in the um, the one in my sketchbook. I'm gonna to try to I'm trying to redo it just like I did that one, so I did use colored pencil on that. Uh, I'm going between the reference photo, which is on Unsplash. We'll try to remember to link it. I'm so bad at that. I the I think sometimes um, it's because I'll like oh I like that I'll download it and I'll I'm just doing it for like well I was doing this for World Watercolor Month. I wasn't really thinking about doing a tutorial for it, so I don't like save it to a collection or anything and then it's like oh darn it I can't find it <laughs> I can't find the darn thing I'm gonna roll that phthalo blue into the the bottom of the belly oh and while that's still damp I'm gonna take some of that light red and ultramarine blue and make a really really dark And I am going to get these little uh, little dangly bits, and also I'm going to do the darker feathers that are in the back that are a little bit that uh, are darker. I'll need to make that a little bit darker than that, even. What kind 
what color do you prefer? Do you guys prefer to have a tin? Or do you prefer to have a big studio palette? To be honest, I like a big studio palette because I like all the mixing area. However, I paint on the go a lot and just to keep my workspace, like I have to be pretty zoomed out to see the mixing area there. I like to keep my, my palette in view when I'm filming, so I end up using a um, a tin. I have to say though, I also like the fact that you can, that the tins, you can hold a lot more colors and less space, but then if you like to use larger brushes, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of stuck. With not a lot of space to, to maneuver them in. Let's see, mix of, I'm kind of regretting using light red rather than burnt sienna, I gotta tell you. I'm having regrets right there. <laughs> the opacity of the, of the uh, light red is, uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to get a really dark color. So, hey, if you're doing this at home, heed my advice, will ya? <laughs> Let's see, that's all pretty dark in there. I'm just minding the branch. Oops, that wasn't dry. Pull out that a little bit. This can also be used up around the face. Which probably also isn't dry, but I like to live dangerously. I like using the color raised pencils because um, they just kind of disappear as you build your painting. I can see the, like the orange where I had the beak a little too big in that drawing, but um, I don't think it's really gonna be that visible. It's just barely, like I can faintly make it out. I think if it was graphite, it would show up quite a bit more. I know it's gonna bleed a little bit. I'm trying to get the bleed to be uh, in my favor. I think that'll work. I think that'll be okay. I varied my mix, I think, because it's darker. It was darker on that side than this side, so I'm adding a little bit more. I'm gonna contend with that situation. Oops. A battle of the colors here. Let's get a little yellow ochre. I think that might, um, Slow the bleed a little bit. Maybe. That's really too dark, but that's all right, because I need to add some more up here. The tufts and the feathers. Bird's got some raccoon eyes happening. <laughs> I think it's gonna be fine though. I'm not too worried. What's the point of worrying, right? There's lots of things to worry about. This shouldn't be one of them. Let's grab some of that Viridian. Pressing my brush a little bit more when I want more thick tufts. I 
Sometimes we start off really shy with our color and then we're like, no, no, we need to get, we need to get serious. This won't do. Probably do a smaller brush though because I'm getting way more water in this mix than I want to. Grab a little burnt, I mean a little um, light red. I love birds that have so many different colors. Some of that light red with the yellow ochre. It's gonna make it a little bit warmer, almost um, almost an orangey. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but like the the uh, this paper, it's I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's really rough, but it's almost making like a little sound. Not a bad sound, but just kind of like a rough. You can hear it when the brush hits it. You know how like marker squeaking is kind of like annoying? This is like the opposite. It's a very comforting sound, I guess. I don't know. It's the ASMR. If I'd stop talking long enough, I could have one of those popular ASMR channels. <laughs> I don't know if they're popular anymore. They were popular. All right, let's uh, get that branch painted. Um, so it's a couple wires in the picture, but I'm gonna make it a branch because I'd rather have a branch than a bunch of old wires. Uh, let's do the yellow ochre and the light red on the top for a highlight. Yeah, this paper is not going to be the, the best for lifting. But that's all right because I hadn't really planned on doing a lot of lifting. I'd already planned on doing mixed media, doing some colored pencils, so that's fine. And that's the thing, you know, if you've got some paper, maybe the sizing's not that great on it. Maybe it's, you know, just you just don't really like it for watercolor. Um, you may find that it's very handy for like mixed media. I'm gonna zoom in on the feet on my photo. Because, oh, I really can't even see them that great. When I zoom in, it's very dark. But I just wanna make sure I'm not leaving too much space for them. Now it could be a little darker right next to the body on that branch because the bird will cast, cast a shadow as well. All right, that's good. Now I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool so I can go in and add more to it. So we'll be back in a second when this is all dry. All right, um, let's go ahead and paint those feet. Uh, we're gonna do ultramarine and the light red again. Actually, I'm going to add a little phthalo in there, just to see what happens. I think it might make it a little bit darker. Oh, that's a pretty color. All right, so the photo is not really helpful with the... Uh, with the feet situation. 
So I'm going to have to do a little bit of baking it. We'll call that good. We're just not going to draw attention to it. We're just going to leave it. <laughs> when in doubt, just try not to draw attention to it. If any area of the picture you're not so sure about, just try to... Oh, I can't zoom back out of my picture. Just try to, uh, try to just downplay it. Oh boy. All right, you do want to fill in some of this light area there. All right, now we're going to move on to some colored pencils and actually some gel pen. Uh, I want to put just a little highlight, just kind of, um, I'm going to set my palette right out of the way. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit because that will be a little bit nicer, I think, for you guys to see. Um, and I am going to, uh, I'm going to look at my, <laughs> look at my drawing actually because the, I can't really see on the photo. I don't have the same personality like this is way more personality than my than my picture I'm gonna grab some colors actually I'm gonna pause it I'll be back in a second okay I needed to grab my pencils and sharpen any that were on the dull side um, so that's why I had to go away <laughs> I had to go away <laughs> oh my gosh I'm zooming in on this poor bird's face I don't know, this this guy has like no personality. I don't know. Not his fault, it's totally the artist. <laughs> okay, we're gonna give him some personality. What's going on? What's going on with this poor guy? He's like, first you make my beak too big, and then you make my beak too small, then you take away all my decorative plumage. What is it saying? What's going on, lady? Come on. Oh yeah, I need like a really pale, kind of like cloud blue color. The highlight needs to be a little bit, a little light. I'm using a variety, actually I have mostly prism colors here. I had recently just um, kind of revamped, actually yesterday. Was it yesterday? No, it was Friday. Uh, I don't know what day it was. I don't even know what day it is anymore. Um, I had, anyway, I had, ooh, that's pretty. I decided to move. Do you ever, like, something fits perfectly, you know? Uh, you probably saw this if you were watching my Snapchat, but I discovered that my Epic color pencil storage <laughs> fit on that little spot next to me, behind me, in the Snapchat videos where I usually keep my spice rack full of Prismacolor pencils. It was like a perfect fit. And then I realized, well, you know, I bet I could fit my Prismacolor pencils in there as well. And I could, and I did. And so that kind of spurred a little uh, reorganization. Oh, shoot. I'm sharpening that too far. Um, so it spurred some <clears throat> reorganization. Oh, you know what? This is that awful color. Electric blue. I hate that color. We need a do-over. Let's go with this is Copenhagen blue. Yeah, let's go with the Copenhagen blue. I should just obey in that color. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it. It never, it's just not a good color. So anyway, I have, um, I put my brute footers. That's what I bought and built that storage solution for. There's a video on how I built that on my channel as well if you want to look it up. But anyways, I built this huge color pencil storage thing and it works great. And so I'm like, well, I bet if I put that in that spot, it fits perfectly, I can fit all of my prism colors in there too. And I did. And then I realized I could fit my, in addition, I could put my new Mark Art pencils, which I'll have a review next, next week for. And I'm darkening up the mask here because it was just too weak. Um, and then I realized I could also put my Arteza pencils and my Mark Art pencils in there with it because those are kind of similar. They're waxy. They're like Prismacolors, but they're firmer. So there are instances where I would want a firmer pencil because, um, like, I want to press firmer, right? Like, and not have the tips, the tips snap. So uh, that's what I did. And they're all right there. And I'm using, I actually will grab them as opposed to just look at them. 
across <laughs> across the room, which is which is much more better. That's what you want to do. You want to use your supplies, not you know have a museum of supplies. That's a nice thing. The marker had some really light colors. So did the brute fooners. Whether they'll show up on this, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to recapture the magic of the bird I painted in my sketchbook. When I did World Watercolor Month, I did so many different. Um, I did 31 different artworks, actually, and I didn't record most of them. And funny, when I'm not worried about recording, I'm a much better painter. When I'm not trying to talk at the same time, I'm a much better painter. <laughs> much better sketcher. Do you guys notice the same thing? That you're better at something when you can focus all of your attention on it? <laughs> Oh, it's coming along. We're getting there, guys. We'll we'll get through this together. <laughs> we'll get through this uh, this tutorial of questionable quality together. There we go. We need a little burnt sienna magic happening. And hopefully, let's see if we can get some of the sassy expression that I had in my first one. And actually, I mean, like, I really exaggerated the, uh, I really exaggerated, the, like, the gesture of that bird in my sketchbook, so it wasn't natural looking. Well, I think it looked all right in the sketch, but, I mean, I definitely pushed it, like, so it wasn't, like, a natural pose. It was definitely a little bit more expressive, maybe even cartoony, but I think it looked really cute. But sometimes it's really hard to capture the magic again when you have created a piece. It's, you know, you try to recapture it in a tutorial and it falls a little flat sometimes. And I'm human, guys. Putting this white down, I might go over it with some other colors because I need that little bit of glow from the background. It looks like he's a beard now. That's not what I was going for. Probably a girl. <laughs> For goodness sake, and I just gave her a beard. Oh, that's not even a prism. No wonder I didn't wreck I hadn't used this. It was stuck in my prism colors in the wrong the wrong slot. this guys should have a little bit of a glow around that this white one's about to the the uh, the point where you can't really sharpen it all right I need more of a highlight on the beak that's one thing that's an issue And sometimes I want a pencil that's not quite as opaque like this uh, brute foner. It's not as nice as the Prismacolor, but it's but it's actually here where I want more translucent color. It's good because it's a harder pencil. It's not going to leave as much. So actually having all those handy is actually pretty good. I need to reshape the head a little bit. I don't feel like those colors have enough. Oomph. Let's try this one. This is better. I don't think I've used this color yet. This is chestnut. I got this set of 150 Prismacolors a few years ago, but I didn't open them up until I moved into this office because I had uh, I had previous Prismacolors, 
and they were just getting kind of down to nubs and I couldn't keep them in my storage because they were so short and I didn't have enough pencil extenders. So I put them in baskets and put them upstairs. Once I got my, um, my fun art desk sorted, that's like the non-work. You know, I just want to sit down and sketch and play and not, you know, have to worry about anything coming out good. Um, and so I have that in little baskets upstairs and I'll take that on the porch and just kind of, uh, just kind of play, you know, play with my media, not worry about it, not worry about it coming out, and work on my sketchbooks. And so I opened up the new package of Prismacolors. I feel like I need something a little bit brighter. I'm going to try this um, Cobalt Blue Hue. Oh yeah, that might do the trick. Uh, yeah, so there, so when I bought that set of 150, the previously, the biggest set I had, it was 144, and they weren't even all Prismacolors, there were some, like, design drawing pencils, it was from, like, 2000 or so, and before that, I had a set of 45, I think, when I was a kid, and then I just, you know, would replenish colors, open stock, or I'd buy new colors, open stock as needed. The highlights are kind of blue, because of natural... Natural light tends to be blue. This is a mess. I need to do something about that. I think I need to bring in some of these lighter colors and then I need to come back in with the Prismacolor Black because we got, we got, uh, we got bad things happening. <laughs> we got some, some issues here. Hey, you know what I think of what the problem is? I didn't make my background dark enough. Those art wheel, pa art wheel paints I used on the original one, I didn't want to use them because they're they're really difficult to find now. But, and I used different paper, I used Arches paper, but yeah, I think those really packed more of a punch, especially for a background, which is weird because these are the M grams. Um, but it could just be this paper it didn't have as much sizing, so I had a bigger shift from what to dry as the paper, as the, uh, as the paint absorbed, but. Yeah, background should have been darker. So that this guy would stand out more. Alright, I need a really, really pale cream. I'm not sure how this situation, my storage thing, because I do have my Prismacolors like much closer together. I don't have them sorted out as much as as much as I did before into so many little compartments. Oh darn it. Prismacolors are so fragile. So I don't know. This definitely is not, I don't have the glow on this. I'm getting frustrated guys. Man, this is not coming out nearly as good as the one I did before. And I don't even know how long the other one took me because I wasn't filming, so I have no idea. Like, did I spend like two hours on that and just not realize it or, or what? I don't know. All right. I'm going to try to redeem myself here. I got a black. I can always go in with a fine liner too. That's like, that's a possibility. And that would be nice and crisp. Man, this paper is wearing, it, wearing them down very fast. This one's too small to go in an electric sharpener. Hopefully it doesn't break. I'm not gonna sharpen it to a needle point because it will. feels well it's weird because it doesn't feel as rough as an arches but I think I think it might be the texture is kind of different it actually might be really good for like pastels and if the sizing doesn't end up being 
what I like in a paper. I might use it for pastels. I do that sometimes. If I have a watercolor paper and I'm not loving it for watercolor, I use it for pastels or for gouache, which are much more forgiving of paper, much less finicky. But I'm not going to blame the paper. This is me. I am. I've actually done several tutorials today, and I think I uh, will pass my prime today. I jumped the shark of the day. <laughs> now what are you going to do? Actually, I have a really busy week, and um, I was afraid if I didn't get my watercolor video recorded that I might not have a chance to because I have... We've got dental appointments this week. I always schedule them all for the same day. I think this might be the last year. That'll also probably be the last time I do them all for the same time because now everyone has their own licenses and their own vehicles, so I don't have to schedule everybody at the same time. So it does take up a day. Well, not a day, but it takes quite a while. We were all split. I used to split it between two days, and I would have two of the kids with one adult, and then one kid with the other adult, depending on who had the less busy time. I just tell my, my hygienist, I need five appointments, <laughs> and she doesn't care who shows up as long as somebody shows up. You'll see three of us today and two of us tomorrow. <laughs> Ah, oh, friends, I don't know. I hope this is one of those paintings that look better the next day, because right now I'm really kind of bumming about this. Uh, let's see, we've got a little bit of a lightness on the tip of the... whatever the heck you call those things. <laughs> the <laughs> tail feather, I don't know, what are they, They're like pigtails. Man, that's not the color I want. Let's go back to chestnut. That was actually showing up. I need to sharpen that a little bit more, though. They come, Prism Colors never used to come sharpened. Like that set of 144, I had none of them were sharpened. And anytime you open stock, they were unsharpened. But the last few years, they've gone to, like, everything being sharpened. And it's kind of a bummer because, like... Before, you could take an old pencil, you could take a new pencil and glue it on the end because they're not capped, and then just sharpen right through it and like not waste a scrap. I wish I still did that with open stock because I can understand it was kind of a drag when you had to sharpen a whole like set of pencils, but then um, but then I also like being able to glue them on the on the ends. Oh, we need a dark brown, I think. Let's try this one. I now was like, can't even see any watercolor now. It's just like, just pencil and... Okay, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try using a gel pen. And if this doesn't work, if this doesn't give me the contrast I need, then I'm gonna have to repaint the background, I think, and make it much darker. But hopefully this will be all it needs. And if I end up repainting the background, then I might end up doing gouache. But I'm hoping I can rescue it with this um, because I painted this once. I don't like to repaint the paintings. Uh, sometimes it's nice just for ideas, like for my sketchbook to do something I've already done once, but for the most part, I don't like repainting things. And I think uh, I think you can probably see why. And it's like I don't even remember struggling with this in my sketchbook, but it could have been because I was just like not worried about it, and I it could I could have had issues and not remembered them because I was like maybe watching a movie or something or had something interesting on the background that I wasn't like. I was just enjoying the process, so it might not have bothered me too much if it wasn't coming out. This might work. I'm getting hungry too. It's about dinner time. I'm falling apart, guys. I'm hungry. My painting's not coming out. 
it's always like too it's like my paintings always give me the hardest time when it's like I've only got one chance to do this because I've got a really tight schedule and if I don't get it done now it's not getting done it's not happening uh, I'll have to not have a video that day and I think it's like partly just the pressure of that I think kind of like this should be really light actually And then it just kind of uh, kind of snowballs from there. But then sometimes I think I totally botch something and I come back and look at the next day and it's like, oh, well, you know, that's all right. This should be yellow. You know what? What if I grab my jelly gouache? Because the thing I love about jelly gouache is that, oh crap, uh, is that it falls out, makes a huge mess. Good times. Um, actually, is that it's ready to go. And I can use my watercolor supplies. I don't even have to get, um, I don't have to get other things. So let's give this a whirl. Let's see if we can repair. I do need another palette though. Let me zoom out. I'm going to zoom out because I'm going to push this out of camera and that might break me. That might actually break me if I fix this darn painting and then I find out that it's all out of focus or it's all off the, off the, uh, off the thing. Yeah, that would, <laughs> I have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see what we can do here, friends. Can she save it? If you're still watching, Hats off, friends. You are the true believers. <laughs> You're the true believers that I can get this done. And certainly is not what I set out to do, I'll tell you that much. It's funny, you see these beautiful, like, uh, photos that are done by professional photographers, like professional landscape, not landscape, uh, like wildlife photographers. And it's like, I can hear birds all the time. And a lot of times you can't see them because they're good at hiding in their surroundings. So this would probably be a little bit more like typical of what you would see if you're a bird watching, the, the bird would not be standing out from its, from its uh, habitat. It takes a very talented photographer to be able to capture an image where, you know, you can actually see the bird see the bird clearly. No, it kind of annoys me. Like you'll find a really great supply, like the Art Whale watercolors, for instance. You'll find, they're two watercolors, you'll find a, uh, a really awesome supply. And then, you know, you get used to using it and you can't find it anymore. Of course, these are like, you know, the inexpensive supplies. Obviously, you know, if it was by um, a big brand, it would be available, It'll also be a lot more expensive, but it would be, you know, available. But it's like these the gouache paints, these artsy gouache paints, they are, you can't find the set anymore. And this 24 set is just ideal. It's just the right amount of colors. It's not too big. It fits on my workspace. But it's like all you can get now are like the, uh, actually I don't know if artsy has gouache anymore. And it's fun to get a big set, but I'm telling you, I have a big set of, of, uh, of jelly gouache. I don't use it anywhere near as often as I use this thing. Cause it's so, cause it's right where I can grab it. It's, it fits on a little shelf next to my desk and because I can grab it easily, I use it. I'm grabbing a little burnt sienna here. I'm going to mix it in with the yellow ochre cause I think it might be a little dark on its own. Oh my gosh, we got so many medias going on here. This is going to be the longest sketch in the history of YouTube. <laughs> How long have we been doing this? <laughs> oh, is anybody still there? That's right. You can want, you can put this on in the background while you uh, do more um, productive art. And just have some company to listen to, right? I do that sometimes. I'll put something on. 
to listen to while I'm while I'm working. A lot of I'm working on my sketchbook. It's nice to have the company. But man, oh man, if I can salvage this thing, I'm gonna feel pretty good. Because I don't know, I'm having my doubts. I really am. At least it's standing out from the background a little bit more. I'm gonna water that down. You can water down gouache and have it like kind of be in between the, the opacity of um, of watercolor and gouache. Help it uh, blend in a little bit to your your painting. Let's take, let's see, this doesn't have, I wanted to make some colors. This color right here, it's like a cerulean. Actually, let's use some of that on its own. I don't want like, to put too much water. In fact, I like to like kind of spray a spray bottle um, on the palette and then pick up water from that because that way I won't get too much. This is like, sometimes you get into one of these paintings and it's like, man, I should have just done this in gouache or colored pencil or whatever to begin with because by the time I'm done, like, none of the original, I could have just done that watercolor background and the whole rest of it in another medium. You know, that's how you learn how to fix things. You royally screw them up and then you you come with ways. I think we're getting there though. I think we're making some progress. I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, this lime green and mix it in with this. Ooh, there we go. That's a nice color. I'm just using this little brush, so hopefully I don't get myself into too much trouble. And then I can like add little bits of white if I like a watery white and mix in with what I've already got if I need to lighten up and give some body and give some like, you know, fluff. And it's not going to be as good as the original, I don't think. I think I've come to, uh, it's too fussy right now. But if I can get it to something I don't hate, I will be, I'll call it a win. All right, it's some white here. I'm putting it right where I have all that water. Mix it, mixing it in with that cerulean blue. I have to add enough water that it will come off my brush. When I go to add it to the painting. Oh, here goes nothing. It's got very like clumpy feathers too. Which I think is something that drew me to this. Um, this bird, I thought it was interesting. Oh, that's standing out really good because it's got so much, it's so dark up here. I think that's just what I needed. I needed something to give me that contrast. That's, that's promising. Hopefully I don't jinx myself. Okay, 
I'm going to grab this some white on its own. Add some highlights. I think we, I think we might rescue this. Ooh, drop my brush. Oh my word. <laughs> I need some more water in that white. This really bright burst here. It's that glow on the edge of the feathers I really want to capture, but I don't want it to look. I don't want it to look like an outline, you know? Like the outline, sometimes you see people, they outline like themselves in white on the YouTube videos. <laughs> I don't want a bird influencer. I don't want this to look like a bird influencer. Let me tell you about this new bird seed I just got. Okay, now I think I'm going to take some black I don't think I'll need too much of that What an inky consistency here I'm telling you what though, I'm gonna be leaving when I when I leave the studio this afternoon, I am going to leave this out. I'm gonna leave that palette out because I can spray it and, and reconstitute the uh the paint if I need to. Um and then if I see that it's as awful like tomorrow or tonight if I sneak back down here, uh I can fix it. Or I can at least fiddle with it some more and hope for the best. So that's the nice thing about gouache, is that like if you want to quit for the day, you need to break, anything in your palette can be reactivated, unlike um, acrylics, although you can use a stay wet palette for your acrylics and that really, um, that can keep your paint a lot longer. I like to use those. I just got, I got a new one to review actually from a new company, so um, I haven't used it yet. I need to. So I don't, I don't think it's available for purchase yet any, anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but um, But I like those I just have the I have the very basic Masterson palette seal so far. I've had that since I was in like high school Like the white there. I don't feel like it should have white. Okay, I need a break. Um, <laughs> this might be it. I might leave it just like this. I might come back and work on it some more. But um, for now, I think I want a little highlight for that branch. I think I think I'm gonna leave it, unless like I get some like major rainstorm. Now I need some more white and blue. Yeah, unless I get some major brainstorm, I think I'm probably just gonna leave this the way it is. Because, I mean, there's some time in my life I'm never getting back. <laughs> and I feel so bad for you guys. You've watched this to the end. You're like, yeah, Lindsay, how do you think we feel? We've got time. We've never, we're never getting this back either. <laughs> I know. A little highlight on the beak. Maybe just a little highlight on the beak's all it needs. Hey, you know what? That's not too bad. All right, I think we're good. Well, friends, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And until next time, happy crafting.